classes, this is your first attempt at a formal lab write-up. And as such, it's going to be worth 100 points and can be a huge factor in your grades. So you're going to want to do a really good job on this. My expectations on your lab write-ups are that they are a professional document when you're done. That means there's no spelling errors, capitalization errors, punctuation errors. It's totally completed and it's totally professional when you're done. Um, for seventh graders, I find that the biggest cause of lost points on lab write-ups is just being careless and lazy and not double checking your punctuation and capitalization and spelling. Stuff that you were taught in first grade, but are often too, too lazy to use in everyday um, writing. So make sure before you submit your lab report in that it is professional without those silly grammatical errors that are kind of common. The lab write-up we're going to do is I want to know if I want to know how changing the center of gravity on a paper airplane affects how far it flies. Um, that's technically the testable question and I'll kind of, sh when I get to the uh, actual lab write-up, I'll show you where to write all this stuff down. The first thing we need to do before we start the lab is identify our variables. And I know you guys learned this at the beginning of the year before I was teaching it, but there's independent variables, dependent variables, and control variables. Independent variables are the thing in the experiment that we are changing. And in this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to either make the front of the paper airplane heavy, the back of the paper airplane heavy, or the middle of the paper airplane heavy. Um, that's called the center of gravity, where the balance point is. So we need to know that our independent variable is the center of gravity. Dependent variable is the thing that we measure in the experiment. And I want to know how changing the center of gravity affects the distance that the airplane is going to fly. So the dependent variable in this is going to be distance. If you can measure distance in meters, I realize at home you might not have a tape measure that's in meters or you might not even have a tape measure and you might have to, you know, measure using steps. Whatever you use, make sure you include the units. In my case, I'm going to use meters. And then we need to be aware of the control variables. Control variables are the things that we have to maintain that are the same so that the test is fair. So for example, you should use like the same paper airplane. You don't want to use a big airplane for one test and then a small paper airplane for another. You want to make sure you throw the paper airplane the same every time, throw it at the same angle, throw it at the same strength. It wouldn't be fair if you threw some paper airplanes hard and very barely threw the other ones. Um, weather conditions, you might have to throw these outside. Um, I know my house indoors isn't big enough to throw the paper airplane to where it won't hit anything. And so try to throw it where there's no wind because if the wind's blowing, maybe the wind blows the paper airplane really far and that'll mess up our results because we'll know that the wind affected it, but we won't know what the center of gravity effect was. So control variables, um, wind, throw strength, need to have the same airplane design, size, shape, design, Anything, anything except the center of the gravity, you want to make sure it's the same throughout the experiment. All right, to complete the lab write-up, first you need to actually open the template up, and you can access that through Schoology. So in this week's lesson, there's a folder called the Paper Airplane Lab, and you'll click on that to open it up. This link will open up the document that you're going to actually type your lab write-up in. You should already have seen this because to be watching this video, the link to this video is going to be somewhere below this. Okay, so to open up the lab right up, click on it. And a blank template for you to fill in should be there. Okay, title. One of the things that is required for a title is that it is a descriptive title. It needs to include both the independent and dependent variable. 
So I will take away points if you just say paper airplane lab. Paper airplane doesn't tell either of the independent or dependent variable. So the best thing to do when you're writing a title is to kind of, and you're not sure what to do, start out with the words, the relationship between. And notice how it's underlining and telling me I have that spelled wrong. If I click on it, it'll give me a suggestion and fix it for me. As you go, make sure you check your spelling. It, it's one of the silliest things to lose points about. You'll also notice that I've got capital letters. I'm going to capitalize my title. All titles always need to be capitalized. So if I'm going to start my title off with the words the relationship between, now I need to put my two variables in. We are, our independent variable is the center of gravity. And you'll notice of and and are not important words, so they are lowercase. And then our dependent variable was distance. Right? So that's our title. And I'm going to go ahead and underline my title just to make it stand out. Yeah, I might even bold it to make it stand out. Okay. You're also going to write down, fill in your name here. The title is worth five points, so I'll take away a point for every error you make. Uh, name. Type in your name and the class period for you guys is online. Okay, so that's another five points that you gained out of the 100 points. Now the testable question down here, I've given you some notes. You're gonna write everything that's in these parentheses, except you're gonna replace the independent variable with the independent variable from our experiment and the dependent variable with the dependent variable from our experiment. So we're gonna say, how does changing the independent variable in this case is the center of gravity affect the dependent variable distance paper airplane flies make sure you put a question mark at the end of this because it is a testable question so they end with a question mark and then i'm going to go ahead and delete the notes i left you because they shouldn't be there but that's the testable question. All right, so next we gotta fill in our hypothesis. And as you recall, a hypothesis is an educated guess. And so there's really only four possibilities for our experiment. Either having the weight in the front of the airplane will make it go farther, having the weight in the middle will make it go farther, having the weight in the back will make it go farther, or they'll all go about the same distance and the center of gravity won't matter at all. And so we need to pick which one of those four options we think is the most likely. And we're not just gonna pick at random, we need to have an educated guess. So what I've done is I've pulled up six pictures of some projectiles that I'm familiar with. And the first one I figured I'd talk about was the airplane, since we've got a paper airplane um, what's the center of gravity like on a regular airplane? Well, I'm guessing here that it's somewhere in the middle. That's where the engines and the wings stick out. That's where most of the weight seems to be on an airplane, where the nose and the tail look like they're about the same weight. So that would suggest possibly that center would be the best. However, if I look at the bullet and those, you know, those travel pretty far and pretty fast, it looks like a bullet has most of its weight near the back of the bullet where there's, you know, more material. There's less material in the front than in the front. So in the front, there's more in the back. So it seems like the center of gravity would be closer to the back for a bullet. An arrow, um, you know, the arrow point is made out of metal and the tail is made out of feathers. So I would think the center of gravity would be, you know, skewed towards the front a little bit. Things like balls, though, like a football that's pretty much balanced both sides equally. The center of gravity of both a football and a baseball would be pretty much right down the middle. And if you ever played badminton, you know that the front is way heavier on a shuttlecock. And so for a shuttlecock, again, they're going to have a center of gravity 
that's somewhere near the front. So which one of these is going to have more to do with distance? Um, let's start with the shuttlecock. The whole purpose of the shuttlecock having the weight in the front is that when you hit it, you want the shuttlecock to turn around in the flight. So when it goes over the net, the next person can hit the front of it with a racket. I don't think they're designed to go very far. So I'm thinking maybe having the weight in the front isn't a benefit to making it go far. It's just a benefit to making the front always point forward. Um, I know when you throw a football and throw a baseball or hit a baseball, you want them to go far. And those are centrally balanced. Arrows and bullets, I think accuracy is more important than distance on those. And speed, and they're a little confusing because one of them has the weight a little bit forward, one has the weight a little back. I don't know what happens there. And of course, the airplane is somewhere towards the middle. So, at least for my hypothesis, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that it's going to, that if the center of gravity is towards the center, then the paper airplane will travel farther. And I think it's going to have to do with um, aerodynamics. I think if the weight was located really high in the front, it would pull the nose of the paper airplane down and make it more likely to hit the ground. And if I think, you know, I think if the weight was somewhere in the back of the paper airplane, it would, you know, pull the back of the airplane down so that there would be more drag as it flows through the air. So I'm thinking that if it's more balanced, the paper airplane will have a better chance of staying flat in flight and more likely to go far. So that's what I'm going to say on mine. You can agree with me or disagree with me. The hypothesis doesn't have to be right, but you do have to state reasoning for whatever you think the right answer is going to be. So now that we know what our hypothesis is, we need to type it into our lab report. The best format to put a hypothesis in is an if-then-because statement, and that's because it guarantees that you'll have both your independent and dependent variable in your hypothesis as well as your reasoning why. And so I'm going to click on here and start with the words if. And since I think that having the center of gravity in the middle is the best, I'm going to start by saying that if the center of gravity is in the middle of the plane, comma, then it will travel farther because, and as we just heard, I was thinking it'll be more aerodynamic because the plane will be more aerodynamic and less likely to tilt up or down. Okay. I just kind of put that in my own words. You'd put yours in your own words or copy mine. I don't really care um, if you agree with me. And then I'm going to delete all the notes I left because, you know, a professional document isn't going to have those notes in it. And so there's our hypothesis. Now, the materials list and the procedure are actually both part of the procedure. The materials list technically is step one of the procedure, and it's, you know, basically where you say step one, gather these materials. And so to do this lab, we do need a few simple materials. We're going to need a piece of paper. And I'm going to start each one of these out with a capital letter. I'm going to need some tape. Notice I'm capitalizing that. I'm going to need a coin. And I can hit enter on one of these to get another bullet point. And I'm going to need a measuring device. Make sure I capitalize that. Measuring device. Okay. Those are the only four materials I need. The procedure is going to be a step-by-step -step account of everything that is to be done in the lab to collect the data. 
Now, I'm not going to have you explain how to make a paper airplane, but we are going to start our procedure with step one, uh, build a paper airplane out of the piece of paper, okay? Make sure all your procedure steps are complete sentences. That means they start with a capital letter, they end with a punctuation mark, they've got, you know, subjects and verbs and all the other correct grammar there is. When I hit two, the next step is going to be on its own line. Okay, and so um, I'm just going to kind of show you in a video, explain how the paper airplane data is going to get collected. But what I'd like you to do is finish the procedure in your own words. You should be able to finish the procedure in maybe five or six steps total. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how you do. Uh, before I leave, I am going to delete the notes again. So that's the materials list is a list of supplies. We know that. And I've already told you that, you know, it's a step by step. So, you know, to make it look professional, I'm going to get rid of those. But what I want you to do is after watching the video on how I think what a good idea would be to collect the data, put the procedure in your own words. Ideally, a procedure, the way I kind of aim for it to be specific enough that a se average second grader could follow it accurately. Okay. You want it to have enough detail that a second grader could follow it, but it can't be too bland that a second grader would go, well, I don't know what to do. So if a second grader can do it, you're good. If a second grader would need more instruction, you need to add that instruction in your procedure. So if you don't know how to make a paper airplane, it's a pretty simple process. First, you take a piece of paper and fold it hot dog style in half, just to make a crease right down the middle. And then we open it up. Take the right upper right hand corner and fold it so it lines up with the middle crease that we made. Do the same with the left-hand corner. Okay. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take the upper right-hand corner and fold it in half again to the middle of the paper. And the other side, again, fold it to the middle of the paper. Okay. Then fold your paper airplane in half. We're almost done. We're just going to fold the wings down and leave ourselves a little bit of room to hold on to the paper airplane down here. Match up the wings by doing the other side so it matches up the wing we folded four and there's our paper airplane